Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Hillary Ashton of Teradata. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Now, today we are joined by Hillary Ashton, the Chief Product Officer at Teradata. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Hillary, hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be joining the Dataversity podcast. Wow, we're so excited to have you here. So you're the Chief Product Officer at Teradata. So what is Teradata and what is it that you do? Uh, Teradata is a cloud and analytics data leader. Um, we have a new cloud native platform that we just launched and it's really the market's most robust analytic capability for driving AI and ML at scale. We serve some of the largest companies in the market. Our customer base includes like 17 of the top 20 global commercial and savings banks, eight of the top 10 retailers. So we have got really big, big, big data customers. When you think of big data, you can think of um, the data that Teradata has. We were, we've were we been around for decades. We were born on premises. And over the past several years, we've made a really exciting journey into the cloud, really transforming how data comes to life through AI and ML in the cloud at scale. Um, I think you also asked what my role is. So I'm the chief product officer. And um, that means that I build the product strategy and direction for the company. Um, but I don't do it by myself. I have a brilliant and really dynamic team of super smart people um, who are experts in data and analytics. They've solved some of the largest, toughest problems with data in the world. And I'm also a mom and a wife and a big Boston sports fan. Oh, very nice. I love it. <laughs> and just to clarify, for those who may not know, uh, AI is pretty straightforward and common, but ML is machine learning, just for, for everybody's <laughs> information. Uh, so, you know, tell me, Hillary, you know, is this was this the dream? Like, did you dream, oh, I'm going to go be a chief product officer for an analytics company and when you were a little girl I mean this is <laughs> what was the dream <laughs> I bring up at my ceiling thinking about being a chief product officer at Teradata no as it turns out that wasn't what I was doing at that time but it's really interesting when I was growing up my dad actually used to call himself the database guy he huh. he worked in data and and I'll say analytics, but really at that time it was much more data and computational stuff. He was actually an intelligence officer in the Navy and worked on some of the largest um, mainframe systems um, in the 70s. So he um, was really very uh, uh, sort of my first spark, I guess I'll say in terms of understanding what data could do. And, you know, I remember as a little girl driving in the car to a soccer game and he would kind of tell me about what he was working on. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to go play soccer now. So, um, you know, all throughout my early life, I had kind of an education in data and kind of the power of data. Um, but it wasn't until I was a senior in college that I started to become much more interested in some of the early opportunities in the internet um, and really some of the early opportunities for data at scale. So um, that was sort of the beginning of my journey, I guess I'll say. <laughs> That's fascinating. That's very interesting. So um, so then as you started uh, really 
making decisions about what you wanted to study. What was that? What, where did you, where did you start focusing on? Oh my gosh, you're going to kick me off the podcast right now. Um, I was, a, I was a government major, so I oh, was wow. brilliant, uh, data scientists and, and, um, analytics and, and, uh, engineers, but I am a liberal arts, a product of a liberal arts education in government. Wow. Very cool. That is very interesting. So how did you progress from there into, into what you're doing today? What was the path there? How did you, um, what, 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 what did you learn and where did, how did you transition between jobs? I, I think when you look up non-traditional career path, like maybe my name will start to come up at some point, probably not. But um, so I, as I said, I, I started getting involved in some of the early um, internet work that was going on. I'm dating myself a little bit here. But I built, um, I worked with teams that built some of the first, first large um, websites in the world, really early days, and wow. got really interested in things like web analytics and really understanding customer journey mapping. Um, mm. And then I joined a company called SaaS. They're still around today. Mm. They're one of the uh, originators of data and analytics um, in the big data arena. I spent 10 years there really understanding um, data and analytics and certainly, absolutely, the technology had a knack for really understanding the, the, the logic behind technology, but also really understanding the value that data and analytics produces for large, large scale customers. So that was my, that was my really um, um, early part of that from there. I don't know if you want me to go on. I can tell you just a couple other stops uh, along. Yeah, please. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, from there, uh, I worked for a software as a service company based out of Bangalore, India, which was super exciting and learned a lot about yeah. Um, uh, you know, taking a, a company that was uh, founded in, in India and, and how to make it um, relevant in the U.S. market. So I ran the, the team here in the U.S. And then from there, I joined PTC. And PTC is an IoT and, um, and CAD, if you, you think of like uh, uh, coming up with the design for large-scale machines. They do a lot of CAD work in, in that space. And I was the general manager of their augmented reality business unit. So I had all kinds of exposures to computer vision data, which is really understanding if you use your phone to scan something in the room and understanding the room. Um, now you can actually do that with machines as well. And so we took IoT streaming data, massive amounts of data. Some is useful, some is less useful, and really making sense of that data through computer vision and also through IoT sensor data. And then I came to Teradata and had this great opportunity I knew about Teradata when I was at SAS. I knew about the power of Teradata. And I had a, a view for how we could really um, transform the value that we bring to the market into the cloud. And I've been here for the past uh, three and a half, almost four years now. Amazing. So what skill sets do you find that you're using in, in your job? And, and the from the um, transition from that, you know, non-traditional career path, you know, as you, as you say, as, uh, as most of us get, who get into data, right, follow this, this, uh, is not ever a straight, uh, path, but so what, where, so you have a, this passion for analytics and so you're bringing all that and what skills are you using in that job today? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a couple of things. I, mm -hmm. um, have always been super curious about how customers, our customers, um, get value from data and technology. And so it's not really data for data sake or technology for technology sake, but really what could you use that data and technology for? And so can you use it to think about a cure for a disease? Can you think about it to identify a fraudulent behavior? Can you use it to figure out what's the right best offer to give somebody when they're at a checkout line or something like that. And so really understanding um, how these different data sources come together, um, being super curious about um, technology and how it works and then how it provides value. So I think that is um, one of the, the super skills that I have. Um, I also um, really understand, I think, the uh, where the market is going from an, uh, uh, an artificial intelligence and machine learning perspective. A lot of our audience has probably heard about generative AI, or maybe they've heard about chat GPT. If you haven't checked it out, highly relevant in the, the careers that you're probably working on right now. Um, so 
the idea of disruption, um, the internet was a big disruptor, right? I think computer vision is a big disruptor. I think that um, generative is another disruptor. And so how keeping an eye on value in the time of disruption is also something that is, is, um, is super important. And, then, and I'm pretty good operationally. I'm a pretty good people manager. You have to ask my team if they agree with that, but um, really focused on de de developing empowered teams, um, operational rigor, and um, agility and execution. Oh, I love that. So, you know, speaking of teams, do you see the importance of uh, data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Uh, absolutely increasing and increasing in ways that I don't even think we can begin to imagine right now. Uh, I think when, um, whenever we have some of, of these disruptive things that happen, I think there's a concern that jobs are going to go away in the technology space or, or in the knowledge worker space. That generally hasn't been the case. I think what we see is people evolve really, really rapidly and new jobs become available. And I'm speaking specifically about generative right now, which I'm really excited about. So I think that is, um, I think it'll be increasing. I think though the, the team piece is also going to be increasing. And so if we look at the maturity of um, data and analytics workers, we've kind of gone from an ivory tower um, uh, you know, super data science PhDs. And if you're out there and you're a data scientist and you've got a PhD, you are awesome. And also there's a whole bunch of data users who don't have that level of expertise. And we need to bring that understanding of data to the business. And so really building that bridge between what data is, how it works, why it's useful into the business driving um, really amazing outcomes for the business. And so that understanding of data growing, those jobs are going to grow massively. And also the more that you can understand the business, I think the more successful you will be. And that requires collaborative skills and seeking to understand um, the data and the business side. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. I love to hear that, especially since you've mentioned artificial intelligence a lot and, uh, you know, specifically chat GPT, which is, you know, hits mainstream media. And there's a lot of discussion around that is whether or not it's going to eliminate all the jobs, you know. <laughs> but, change things. I mean, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're an expert. I think it's going to change things pretty substantially mm -hmm. for people. Um, but humans, you know, if we think of ethics and we think of trust and we think of ethical data, ethical AI, mm. ethical ML, ML, that there's yeah. um, there's a whole bunch of work that humans will have to do around the trust of data and the trust of the uh, AI and ML and generative space. So that's go liberal arts students. If you're a liberal arts kid out there and you're thinking about data, um, I, I certainly would encourage you to join, join those uh, together. I love that. So what advice would you give people looking to get into a career in data management? So it's a very exciting space right now. I think you have to find a place that you personally find really exciting and interesting. I think if you're doing it because someone told you to go do it or you think you're going to make a fast buck over here, you know, careers can be long and, um, and data and analytics can be tough. And so you really Really need to find an aspect that you think is exciting. It could be that you think you can help cure a disease, or you think you can help with um, poverty. You think you can help with uh, certain aspects of how data can really drive data for good. Um, it could also be that you think the math is really cool around analytics, and you want to get super involved in that, or you love technology, and data is just a part of technology in your frame. So find something that excites you. Find a reason to get out of bed and go get after it every day. Um, and then I think look for places where you have a unique skill set. You might be the, the fastest, uh, you know, programmer out there. You might be somebody who really thinks deeply and solves big picture problems. Um, you might be awesome explaining some of this to um, new workers uh, and to uh, customers and, and really solve problems through the data. So 
lots of opportunities out there. Find something that you're passionate about that you want to really focus on. Such great advice. And, and that's a common theme that we're hearing from many people is find your passion and get curious. Yeah. Right. And it's, do you think curiosity is a, a skill that can be learned and practiced or is it something that you either have or don't? I think it's something that can be practiced and, and improved on. I think, I think humans generally tend to be fairly curious just as, I mean, it's part of what's kept us alive as a species for so, so long. If we weren't curious, we'd all have been, you know, drowned in a river or I don't know, burned by fire or something probably a long time ago. So I think, um, uh, adapting and, and being curious is part of our deep, deep, deep DNA. I think sometimes in cultures, meaning corporate cultures or, or even family cultures, right, that curiosity can be tapped down a little bit or maybe frowned upon. Maybe you shouldn't be a hand raiser and ask questions. So I think in order to, to flourish with your curiosity, you need to find a good environment um, where, and, and maybe you're part of someone who can create that environment for yourselves and for your teammates to really um, ask, ask the why, ask the how, ask the, you know, what else could we do here? So I think um, making sure that you're putting yourself in a, an environment where curiosity is rewarded and where um, mistakes and, and errors are, um, people are just curious about it and then we'll figure out what we're going to do differently. And in that case, um, I think framing that for for teams is super important too. I think it helps us innovate much, much faster when we're curious, we learn and fail fast, as they say, right? But really be curious about the failure so that um, everyone can learn from it. So oh, important, such good advice. So many people think that that failure is, you know, you try to avoid it, but that is how we will learn, right? Right. right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, you're one of the first people to bring up, you know, some of the cool things that data can do. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, you know, um, improving health, uh, you know, solving global problems, you know, you know, have, what are some of the cool things that you've seen um, come as a result of data? Yeah, I mean, I could just reflect on on a few areas and we could talk about this for like another two hours because I love I love use cases. I think yeah. use cases of how data solves um, solves world issues and, and local issues is pretty exciting stuff. So, um, you know, during COVID at Teradata, uh, we had, um, customers who had very different data needs, right? Some, some, um, medical suppliers were spiking in their need to understand data and analytics. Supply chain became a massive problem in getting materials and goods to healthcare workers, frontline workers, but also automotive supply chains, um, uh, airline supply chains, right? And so being able to help our customers with the data that they needed during the Black Swan event, right? Another data Black Swan event um, tied to um, the, 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 the terrible um, uh, COVID problem was something that uh, really led to some remarkable uh, transformative opportunities for customers. I think in other parts of the business, there's um, you know, if you think of banking, I, I think uh, fraud is a super interesting area and it can be super nerdy. We have a, a customer that is doing something um, uh, to prevent remote access takeover. It's called RAT and it's where someone is trying to pose as you um, on, their, on their website. So they, they log in and they say they're Shannon, but actually um, we can detect through data and analytics in real time that that person is not in fact you because you're not in Japan, or, or maybe you don't normally browse the website in this particular way. Um, maybe you don't loiter on this particular page for so long. So through biometric information and web analytic information. So there's a lot of interesting places that data um, and, and business problems can come together um, and, and really help, help solve uh, big problems and medium-sized problems. And, even small problems. So uh, those are some examples and we could talk more about retail examples. We're doing a really cool uh, generative AI use case um, with uh, smart shopping carts in, um, uh, in the Middle East where we're looking at um, understanding the sequence, like a sentence is a sequence, um, which is really generative, um, a sequence of what, you norm what people might normally buy in what order in a mm -hmm. store. And that's mm -hmm. 
on the, the, the planogram, right? The layout of the grocery chain. And so if you're online, we know how to promote things into your, into your basket because there are no aisles online. There's just, you know, certain right. kinds of a website, but in a, in a store, you know, you maybe go to the fruits and vegetables section and then you hit the dairy section and then you're in the, the middle of the grocery chain or the grocery store looking at, you know, boxed, boxed goods, right? And then you, then you probably, um, you know, hit the bakery on your way out. So the sequence in which you might buy things is really a sentence structure. And we can look at the basket that you have based on the shopping um, sequence that you've done so far. And we can recommend the next word in the sentence to you or the next item that you might wanna buy. So that's a really cool and exciting use case of data and generative, um, you know, massive language models coming together. Um, and, uh, and so that's an exciting, exciting area too. So we probably awesome. start talking about that because I could tell you many, many more stories, but I think where data comes together and solves super interesting problems is, is pretty exciting. So exciting. And, and I don't know that it's, I, it's one of my favorite things about being involved in data is, you know, we, we get to work with so many industries in across the globe. Uh, you know, it's just relevant to everybody. Hmm. Uh, and, and so I, I love the idea I, of, you know, somebody coming into data, marrying it with a passion, you know, and just, it's just a really happy place. <laughs> And so, and I want to ask you about this too, because it is such a top topic, you know, chat GPT. So you say, go check it out, you know, so what is, what is your take on it and the use case for it and, and where is AI going? I think that we are, again, I'll pull the lens back out and say, you know, um, it, it's, I think it's a pretty significant disruptor for us, like massive, massive disruptor for us. Um, normally when you're in the beginning, of a massive disruption, you actually don't know what the use cases are. You yeah. think you do. You have hypotheses. Yeah. Awesome. You should always have a hypothesis. But um, but oftentimes, I'll just say either it's a dead wrong or it massively evolves and you couldn't even recognize it when you look at it. You know, from from far away, a, a few years later or a decade later. You know, I think um, funny story when I was really, I think I was two years out of college. Now I'm totally dating myself here, but my, um, I, I left a company and I joined uh, uh, a company that was really focused on the internet, as I said. And my boss at the old company was like, oh, the internet's gonna go the way of the CB radio. It's really just a way to like talk to people. And it's not, it's really not that, that you know, I guess uh, big of a change. So um, I think that there's, in a similar way, I don't think that several decades ago we would have imagined what the internet was going to do. I think generative is going to be the same, um, mm -hmm. but I do think it's going to have a substantial shift in how we do our work and how the world works. And mm -hmm. with that, I think there's there's definitely some ethics that we're going to have to think about. There's some pretty mm -hmm. serious trust issues that mm -hmm. we're going to have to think about. Um, and I think it's going to be up to to corporations like Teradata to think through and help customers think through the implications of the super exciting um, uh, technical capability with what you want to do with it. Um, and so we see some of that friction in the market with, through some, with some thought leaders who have had some, some pretty significant um, data points to read out to us. So I think, I think the world is watching. I think we're gonna have to um, be excited about the technology and the art of the possible, and also think about um, some pretty big macro issues like humanity and what we want um, from a um, trust um, and ethics perspective. What kind of world do we want to live in and what kind of world do we want to create for others to live in? So oh, important. And I'm so glad to hear that that's at the forefront. Um, yeah, I agree. So um, I'd love to, you know, I could probably have that conversation for hours too. That's such a hot topic in the world of data right now. Yeah. So data ethics and uh, making that a priority. Oh, well, Hillary, this has been such a great conversation. So, but I would be remiss if I didn't ask, you know, how do people find out about Teradata and the exciting new products that you have? Uh, well, thank you for asking. Um, you can ask ChatGPT. Um, you can also 
go to teradata.com. Um, you can hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm pretty easy to find. I'm Hillary Ashton uh, at LinkedIn. And um, yeah, we're, we're doing some exciting things. We are hiring. So uh, we are a profitable growth company. And so for folks out there who might be looking for an, their next opportunity, uh, you can take a look at our careers website. Oh, very nice. I, I love that. So uh, we'll get those links from you and we'll put that on the podcast uh, page so that everyone has access to those links. Well, Hillary, thank you so much for this interview. It's been such a great conversation. I really appreciate it. Um, anything else you want to add before we before we sign off for the day? No, Shannon, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Uh, I love what you're doing with data diversity. I think that the, um, the opportunities for folks out there, no matter where you are in your career, is stay curious, um, find something that you're super passionate about, and then help others, right? Help others in their journeys as well. Um, and and we will, we'll, we'll take advantage of some of these new exciting areas and we'll, we'll also be thoughtful in, in terms of the, the implications for them. Thanks. So important. Thank you. Well, Hillary, again, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. And for all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest podcasts and in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.